Hello everybody and welcome to ARL TV for this round one of our GP260 Championship. My name is Andrew Woodhouse and I'm joined here for round one at Road America by former PS3 F1 Formula 1 World Champion Alex Simpson. Hello mate, good to be here, looking forward to this race. It's uh, something new as uh, we see um, Charles Sears just uh, spinning there into the gravel. Uh, yeah, this is going to be a fantastic series, uh, lots of different drivers throughout the field, so we're going to have some good racing throughout, uh, team championship, nice uh, sort of coloured skins as well, so should uh, hopefully some guys should recognise those. Yeah, indeed, these skins, the skins should be familiar to most of you watching, as, uh, well, we'll leave that to your own deductions for now, but um, 26 drivers registered for this series and all of them are eager to make a good impression in this first round of the season at the four mile 14 turn road america circuit in the united states and well qualifying is about that got the first car out onto the track it's marco montaldo yeah straight out trying to get some clear air obviously 15 minutes 26 cars they're all flowing out so uh, one good thing about Road America it is a long track, so you know the nobody really should get held up too much in qualifying. So everybody should be uh, should give each other some space. Should be good. Yeah, I'm guessing that's why the Montaldo has decided to get out on the track as soon as possible. It's obviously a long lap round here, you know. Um, practice times the fastest time was two or two point eight. So you're not going to get many laps in in this session, are you? No, not at all. Um, you know, you sort of you need to uh, hit the money really within the first three laps because I don't think you're going to get too many more with. Oh, someone spins there, and I think there was a little bit of contact there. So that's uh, back to the pits already for a fresh car. Yeah, that's somebody's lap ruin, as it is. But um, Alex Road America, you know it well. Uh, I know it well. Great track. Yeah, should provide good racing on our first round of the season. Yeah, fantastic track. Like you say, should be an excellent first race. Um, you know, the Star Mazdas, not quite as like high performance as the uh, F1 cars. So, uh, quite a, you know, you, you get a good run down some of these straights as well. So, it'd be difficult for the guys to break away. Plenty of slipstreaming will go on. So, lots of moves into the, you know, turn five and the back after the back straight as well. So, those two hairpins. So yeah, we should see some uh, great overtaking. I mean, we sort of touched on some of um, the, the different caliber of drivers. You know, we've got everybody all the way from Class C all the way up to DWC drivers in here as well. So uh, we should see some great battles. Um, one person we are missing uh, this week actually, uh, just give him a shout out, is Jao Cardoso, who's um, done his arm in. So I think he's resting up, trying to get it in oh, some dear. reasonable shape so he can do the Pro Series race tomorrow. So, you know, we wish him all the best and hope that he um, makes a sharp return for round two. Indeed, and uh, looks, there are there are some prizes up for grabs at the end of this series as well for the winners. Yeah, quite quite a good little prize haul that we've uh, managed to get together with um, our sponsors, and which is uh, GTO Mega Racing and um, ARL as well. So, you know, big shout out to those guys. But yeah, we've got effectively we've got a couple of racing rigs and wheel stands up for grabs. So. Um, Let's uh, hope some of these uh, some of these lads win that win those. One one for sure will go. One is a, a an ARL league prize draw, so they are, the guys will automatically get entered into that big overall league league draw. But there's also um, credits up for grabs as well. So the top top drivers and the top constructors will all get uh, credits at the end of the season. So uh, just to also give a shout out to uh, Sim News Daily as well, who's done a lot of promotion for this league. So big thanks uh, to Alistair and uh, Sim News Daily. If you haven't. Um, been to his site do go and check it out simnewsdaily.com indeed you're not going to miss out on anything if you if you visit sim news daily um alistair's a good good friend of ours he raced in our leagues didn't he alex a, a couple of seasons ago and hopefully we'll see him back uh, very very soon and on the first qualifying lap of the season is by marco montaldo we're just joining him as he goes through the third sector of the lap just past the kink and through this very very fast section over 150 miles an hour but you've got to break down for this 90 degree effectively right hander with a large runoff area montaldo careful um over the curbs here 
taking quite a lot of the inside kerb. He's got effectively another 90 degree right hand there and onto the start finish straight. And we'll see what time he registers. First man over the line, Alex, and it will be. It will be 2 minutes 3.4, and that's pretty good. Pretty decent lap so far, what we've seen in the official series, the 2 minute 3 is looking right on the money. And Tony Repressard goes into. Uh, to provisional pole position, 2 or 2.9, so half a second quicker than Montaldo, but it was a good lap by Montaldo. Yeah, we saw um, Tony do a 2 or 2 in free practice as well just before, yep. so uh, it's definitely going to be close in that midfield section. A lot of 2 or 3s in that practice session. Yeah, Montaldo pretty much equaled his lap from practice, So, uh, but Repressard, you, you would say, from his reputation in the official series, has a, has a very good chance of winning this championship. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of names, actually. I mean, a lot of people just sort of look at the top drivers, but actually there's quite a few drivers in there that could do it. I mean, it's uh, traditional sort of F1-style points, 25 for the win, 18 second, 15 third, and so on. So consistency can win the championship as well. It's not going to be about coming in and doing a few races, getting some win un wins under your belt, maybe missing a couple of races or crashing out. Uh, no drop rounds in this one as well. So consistency really does make a big deal. Indeed, and there are some very good names in this series as well. You know, you've got Daniel Lopez, you've got uh, Jao Pino, who you've um, clashed with a few times on the track. Yeah, uh, Ben Horrell, who, who was a uh, a finalist in this car in the World Cup in 2012. Uh, Eleven, but we'll uh, we'll let you off that well, one. Well, it was, but yeah, it went into twelve, but it was <laughs> it was the eleven competition yeah, there's some good some good drivers in here it should be a good good fun series and you know competitive action is what ARL is all about yeah first race for a lot of the teams as well a lot of these guys have never sort of raced with each other as, as like as a constructor so we'll see how the, how uh, many of them are gonna actively work together and have shared setups and Maybe some team strategies will come into play later on in the race, um, or whether at the moment the drivers are still sort of out for themselves, or or what. It'd be interesting to see who who has worked with who. Yeah, indeed, we've got some very recognisable uh, colour schemes on these cars as well, and, and they'll be easy to recognise, hopefully, for everybody at home. Of course, the uh, the drivers. Drivers putting in a big effort. Peter Velkov has gone into provisional pole position with 202.9, and that is half a second quicker than his practice time. So, good luck from him. Yeah, fantastic lap there. One we didn't see on the stream, but uh, certainly just uh, opens it up. Like we were saying, it really could be anyone's. So, and I mean, I would think uh, just the way uh, Road America is as well, you're going to need sort of a good sort of quarter of a second to half a second lap advantage over a driver to really break away from uh, the slipstream that you can get here so it's a long old track and lots of straights as well so if you if you're within three tenths of a second I think you've got half a chance of hanging on to someone who might be just a fraction quicker and perhaps pull you around the circuit yeah especially in this car as well Alex where he's got you know he's not the biggest top speed is it? it's about 150 155 down the main straight so you've really got to um, really got to drive cleanly in order to try to make a break but We've got some good drivers in here as well, just to add to a couple of the names we've got in there. We've got uh, a couple of guys from the V8 Supercar Series that we've run. Chris Lucky, um, Season 1 champion. Tom Jones is in there as well, one of the moderators. Liam Williams, who is a regular in the official Star Master Series, I believe, these days, and the IndyCar Series. So That said, he's doing quite a bit of F1 of late as well. So Indeed. Some drivers who are very much used to these open wheel races that's, that's for sure yeah just looking at the top five all within half a second of each other at the moment and sixth and seventh not too far behind as well so it's definitely going to be a fantastic race as uh, it's lining up at the moment it's like a couple of drivers just struggling to find that little bit of room out on the track so I'll take that back from earlier on <laughs> Lee Thompson in the caterham 
Lee's uh, did a, did a fourth official series uh, last season. Was his first one. So this is the second time back uh, in the Star Master. I know he's, he's splitting his time with the uh, FW31 and the uh, Star Master now. So we'll see if that's going to have any kind of impact on him. But I think he said he was able to do 204s, 203, something like that. So yeah, indeed, and um, that, they're going to be competitive times all the way through. That's for sure. Let's have a look at the, just have a quick run down the top five. Velkov is on pole position as we stand on 202, 903 and just a hundredth of a second behind is Tony Reprasad. Colin Cuniff is in third place. Daniel Lopez in fourth and Jao Rodriguez in fifth. And he's the, is he the teammate of Jao Pino Rodriguez? Uh, no, Rod Rodriguez is in the Venezuelan team. I think it's uh, oh, with Montaldo. <laughs> Yeah, Pin Pino is Cardoso's teammate. So right, I see. he's a only representative out there for him, so he'll definitely need to have a good run if uh, they're going to have any hope for the uh, Constructors' uh, Championship. Yeah, especially as he said, with uh, absolutely no dropped rounds on the show. So. Yep, yep, just the one race as well tonight. It's not like we do two back to back or anything like that, and it's your best one or anything. Like that. It's literally just one race, one qualifying session. And those are the points you get, so. Yeah, indeed, and, and it's all important that a good result is gained in the first round. We know all too well, Alex, that um, <laughs> you have a poor start to the season and it can just go uh, pear shaped from there. Yeah, absolutely, I mean, you have a bad race in the first race, it puts you under pressure for the second race, and then if that doesn't go too well, it's the third, and you know, you want to get off to a reasonable start, get some points on. on you know, in the bag earlier on, obviously it's only the top 10, 26 cars here. So top 10 scoring points. So there is count back as well. So those will be, you know, those who coming in sort of 11th, 12th will effectively be ranked above those below. So, but uh, it, it is still important to um, to get some good points on the board. You know, a 10th place in this field, I think will be a fantastic result still. Yeah, and Reposad has just gone there. Uh putting a marker there 202.6 he's just gone three tenths ahead of Velkov so very good stuff from from Tony there just as I aimlessly press the picture and picture button just to show it off we're um, I'm just working just for just to give a shout out just I will improve the graphics card on the second PC by the time we get to the next round guys so don't give me a hard time but uh, <laughs> <laughs> we, we've, we've got it working that's the main thing and uh, we'll uh, improve that for the next round so but it'll certainly yep. be interesting to watch some of the onboard uh, battles at the same time as, uh, as we're watching from TV cam as well as uh, grab the replays on that as well so uh, Thanks to the guys that helped me out with uh, getting that sorted on the X-Split forum, so they, they deserve a shout out. Yeah, that is one of the um, you know one of the great things about about the internet is problems can be quickly solved. I think as um, our overlay, you know, is it's always evolving. We're getting new versions of it all the time, and uh, just to try to bring more features to you at home. And one of the things we've got is this picture-in-picture -picture system, and hopefully we'll be able to bring you some great action alongside the um, it, without without having to uh, have any breaks in the action, Alex. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, we, um, we it is ARL TV after all. We always are prone to the odd little technical glitch, so I'm sure we'll see something yes. again tonight. So, <laughs> but um, yeah, let's hope um, everything runs smoothly. And uh, I know the guys are still improving the overlay system quite a bit as well, so we're expecting to get some decent um, pictures of the cars and the vectors and things like that all sorted, so it uh, should be great for the grid and whatnot. So we're developing service, so you know we hope you enjoy the show, and if you've got any um, you know any advice for us, or th you know we're open for the constructive feedback, so you know by all means uh, get in touch with us on the uh, iRacing forums uh, or join uh, ARL. And that's apexracingleague.com and uh, be sure to uh, let us know what you think and where we might be able to improve the service. Um, we're always, always interested, isn't it? Speaking of improving the service, my internet is useless and I'm just sad. Um, <laughs> really, really struggling at the moment, but we've only got well, we've only got a few moments left, a few minutes left in qualifying. 
for this first round of the season. Yeah, just a minute there, and there's a couple of drivers looking like they were about to come out. I'm not sure they're going to make it round, so I think their qualifying session is done and dusted. With a minute to go, can you just give us a quick rundown of the order as it stands? No, I can't. <laughs> My screen isn't working, so it's okay. Um, you lost to do it, I'm afraid. Uh, no problem. Ticker's just about to roll, roll on through, so I'll take a quick look as it goes at the moment. So Tony Reprisard currently with uh, provisional pole position 202.6, fantastic. Peter Velkov, second place, just two tenths of a second behind. Jao Rodriguez, three tenths of a second back. Colin Knuff, and that's half second back. Daniel Lopez taking up fifth place, just a fraction behind Colin there as well. So top five looking very close. It's Luke Dowding goes off in the Arden there. Yeah, Ben Hall in the uh, in the Adex there as well. He's teamed up with Chris Lucky. Could be a, could be a fairly um, interesting team to keep an eye on. Um, Ben's you know can can really turn the pace on if he gets enough running in, and uh, we know what sort of Chris's standard is as well. So it's just whether or not that V8 car will transfer over nicely to the uh, Star Mazda. Yeah, Horrell's not had a qualifying has he so far. Um, all the way down in 19th place for the Adax team, so that's not really what he wanted. Uh, his teammate Chris Lucky is in 11th, so uh, not a bad, not a bad start for the uh, the American really. And he's got a knack of having this consistency during races as well, Chris Lucky, which really could help him in this field uh, move up a few positions. Uh, that early lap from Montaldo, which was the provisional pole lap at the start of the session, has held up pretty well to be sixth without any improvement from him so far, so not a bad effort there from the Italian driving in a Venezuelan car. So any drivers not set a time that I haven't seen? Anyone going to try and start from the back and avoid the turn one chaos that sometimes can happen here at Road America? It's a very, very the, tricky turn. The only one I think hasn't got the, uh, the uh, hasn't got a timing yet so far is Jao Pino. Um, the Grand Prix Series veteran. So he's he might be opting to start from the back. 23 cars is, is the grid size. Uh, well, th that's the entry so far at least. Just it's going to uh, be good. I'm excited for this. I think we're going to have some good racing here. Just as the drivers all come through to finish their laps, we'll just have a quick look at the at the grid. If you can, uh, any chance you can take us through that now, or uh? I can take it through. Yes, <laughs> I can take you through it now. It's not a problem. We've got Tony Repassard then, who will take the pole position with 202.684. Good luck from him. Peter Velkov alongside him, sharing the front row, and then we've got Shao Rodriguez and Daniel Lopez. Third and fourth, Colin Cuniff and Marco Montaldo, fifth and sixth. Nenad Matievich and Justin Lindsay on row four. John Allett and Wojciech Rabstin on row five. Chris Lucky and Hugo Preto on row six. Then row seven is Lee Thompson and Liam Williams. Fifteenth uh, is Luke Dowding, head of Tom Jones in sixteenth. Charles Sears is seventeenth. Uh, Paul Nelson is eighteenth. Then Ben Horrell, Aaron Mullen, Neil Archbold. Sam Taylor and Jao Pino, I believe, is starting at the back. So not long, Alex, not before the start of the season for the GP260 series. Just waiting on the guys at the front to uh, make their way onto the grid. It's going to be great. This who's your money on? It's hard to say. I mean, uh, I think I'll give that a call after we've seen the first lap, see who survives. Let's hope we have a nice clean start. Obviously, okay. slight differences um, as well. 21 watching, thinking this is just going to be a straight on race. There are pit stops in this as well. The guys are limited to five kilos of fuel, so we're going to see some pit stops and some strategies may pay, pan out here. So we'll see who goes light to start or who goes heavy at the end. Could be very, very interesting. Yeah, indeed, five kilos is not a lot of fuel. We're only seconds away now from the start. I'm going to get the red lights first. Any moment now. Here we go. Revs are building. 
Green, green, green! We are away at Road America. And it's a good start by Peter Volkov on the outside of the Marussia. And on the inside, Rick Passard's in trouble from pole position. Is he going to lose the lead into turn one? Velkov's on the outside. He's not going to try anything. Yeah, Velko gave him enough room there, I think. I think we've got some action further back. I'm not quite sure what's got happened there. Certainly a few cars out there. Got Rodriguez up into third. Colin Kunis right behind him down this long straight, Alex. We've got three or four attempts at a pass. Down towards the hairpin. Might have an attempt for the lead as well. Not quite, but we've got Colin Cunniff steaming up the inside into P3. Just up the inside of Rodriguez. Matievich is up to fifth. And then Lopez has just gone around the outside of Montaldo. Just having He's a very quick sixth. look at the start again, because certainly a lot of action happened there. We saw just off camera as well. I'm not quite sure who got into who there, but it's always a bit tricky through that turn one. Indeed it is. Yeah, looks like perhaps three or four cars there taken out. Aaron Mullen up to ninth from 20th on the grid, Alex. That's amazing. Brilliant start by, by him. Looks like Ben Horrell, Luke Dowden got involved, some others as well. Looks like one of the, uh, either Liam or Justin, one of the Lotuses. Ben Horrell and, ben Horrell and Zhao Pino have made up tons of positions. Horrell's made up, I think, 10 places. Pino has made up 13 places. Tremendous starts. Tony pulling a little bit of a wet bit of a gap as well. Peter as well, trying to get a little bit of a bit of free air so he's not being challenged. But a flying lap there from uh, Tony held on to that first corner, kept his car up the inside. Yeah, the Frenchman's up. A fantastic start to the to the race here. And but look at the snake behind him, Alex. Five or six cars, nose to tail almost. Yeah, you can almost see behind as well where there was that instant in turn one last lap is uh, sort of split the field in half there. Jao Pino's taking Aaron Mullen for ninth. Tom Jones is having a look at Sam Taylor. Taylor started 22nd, he's up to 10th, so almost the entire, um, almost the entire midfield was taken out, Alex, at the beginning. What, yeah, what? it did look like four or five cars sort of got together. I think there was a couple of cars just uh, rubbed, a, rubbed wheels and unfortunately left a few drivers nowhere to go. So I can tell you that in the pit lane is Chris Lucky, Hugo Preto, Lee Thompson, Luke Dowding, Charles Sears, Paul Nelson, Liam Williams, and uh, Rojcik Rapstein is in at the moment. I believe Nelson Nelson's come out of pit lane. Oh, and uh, round is Sam Taylor, who's had a spin. He's had a spin there just before the carousel, I believe. Looks like he didn't hit anything, so he's getting going again. Repertard is, is uh, showing a fine pace at the start of this race, on it. Yeah, flying away at the moment as well, so it'll be interesting to see if that's just down to uh, slightly different strategies or... And look at this. Sorry, Alex, look at Matievich. He was having a little look there at the inside of Rodriguez. Yeah, we were just on board with him just a second ago there, so... Looks like he's uh, just waiting his time. It's, it's very, very early days at this point. It's very close, and he's... Oh, what a good move! Very good move from Matievich. He really took him by surprise on that one. Rodriguez just wasn't expecting that. Yeah, not a normal place that you'd go for a move, so... Timed Although, it perfectly. I do have a feeling now... Matievich is going to be vulnerable down into turn one as they crest the rise and go down the hill. Yeah, Daniel into Lopez in sixth place just looking, waiting to see what's going to happen between these two. Surely uh, Alex Rodriguez has to have a go to try and get the place back straight away. Yeah, down into turn five, I think it's going to be his best chance. Didn't look like he had a very great exit there, so... It's going to take him a while to wind up and get back on the tail here, so but he might just get close enough to have a little look. So It's been a good start for both the Venezuela GP cars. And he thinks twice. 
And uh, someone having a move there, Daniel coming under pressure, late break in there. It's Montaldo, and that's the teammate of Rodriguez, having a little look at Lopez. Yeah, like you say, good start for the Venezuelan team there, both, Brilliant. both working their way up nicely. Looking at the other constructors as well, a lot of guys were taken out in that <laughs> first instance, so this could be the best constructors, uh, constructor team of the uh, race so far, so yeah, all good for those lads. Definitely, Venezuela looking, looking very strong. He's um, J John Allett's Tony's teammate, isn't he? Um, he's 11th. So, but it's uh, only points for the first 10, isn't it? So, Allett's just outside the scoring range at the moment. Yeah, Except very. Aaron, Aaron Mullen's going to be very, very happy with his start, Alex. Yeah, especially just... after he started so far down the grid. Just needs to keep it clean, really, now, and uh, should be okay. P12, you never know what's going to happen. After uh, yet another first lap accident here at Road America, though, Alex, we seem to see quite a few big pile ups on this track. Yeah, we do. The um, V8 supercars last season as well was absolute chaos here. As, and, uh, you know, let's not forget like the DWC race as well last season. Oh, that was a nightmare. So. It's no, it's no, <laughs> it's no surprise that we've uh, seen a little accident. I thought for a moment we were all going to get through, but there was just that tiny bit of contact, and that was what just uh, set off the catalyst. I'm afraid. Looks like um, Colin Cunish just starting to hold up this little train of cars behind him, uh, with Matievich, Rodriguez, Lopez, and Montaldo. Looks like Cunish just holding them up a little bit too. Old. 204.2 on the last lap, Matievich 203.7. As surely there's going to be some kind of move down into the hairpin, you would think. As they're all putting a lap on Ben Horrell, who I think he got involved in the first lap carnage, did he? I think he did. Um, it was either him or Chris, I'm not entirely sure. It's one of the ADAX cars that I saw, unless both of them got caught up in it. Jalpino's in the 203s as well, so give him a few laps and he might be able to catch this lot. Um, Tony Reposado from France, he's got the lead by 1.7 seconds over Peter Velkov. Really good clean start from them. Everybody at the front, in fact, drove very cleanly at the beginning there. And Cunniff, he's just fast enough, isn't he, Alex, to keep, them, keep the rest of them at bay at the moment. Yeah, it seems to be like he's got a bit more straight line speed, so perhaps he's gone, um, he's not the arrow down for the race just so he can defend this sort of position where maybe some of the other guys have cranked up the, uh, cranked the downforce up a little bit and uh, just find it difficult just to get that run into the, uh, into like the slow corners. Yeah, he's definitely got that Colony working very well there. And, um, but yeah, the Venezuela team looking like, well, They'll be on for a good haul of points, 16 points, actually, as it stands at the moment. So they'll be third in the championship. And just had a quick shout from the uh, race admin as well. They've taken a look at the look at the first corner instant, and it's totally just a racing instant. So no one to blame, no penalties or drive throughs or anything like that coming. So it's just one of those unfortunate things, I'm afraid. Right, no action taken there. That's In a way, that's good to hear, Alex, because... You know, you don't want good racing, well, don't want penalties dished out for no reason. As the cars, or oh, somebody kicking up dust there, I think it was Rodriguez. And in fact, Rodriguez is right on the back of Matievich here, Alex. He's almost pushing him down the straight, and he's going to pull out of the slipstream. And is he going to outbreak him into the hairpin? So look, seen some accidents there over the past few months. And look at this, Lopez, he's really going to try and take advantage of this. Up over the crest and into this tight right-hander, has he done it? He's now on the outside for the next corner, brilliant from Lopez. Yeah, opt, you know, optimistic move there, waited, just took his time and, uh, you know, picked up a place there, so... They did it in such a way that Matievich would find it very difficult to come back at him. Daniel Lopez then who started fourth on the grid, didn't have a good start, but he's back up, well, back up to you fifth now. So there's nothing between these five drivers though, so I think this battle could go on the whole race. 
It could indeed. And Justin Lindsay's not far behind either. He seems he's looking to... like he's... I was about to okay. say, he seems to be like he's slowly catching up to this group as well. You know, Justin definitely a bit more of a Star Mazda specialist, I would say. So, races for um, AR UK in the uh, in the, the Formula One series. So, it's getting, slowly getting up to speed and to grips with that car as well. But definitely, you know, right on the money as far as Star Mazda goes. So, we'll, oh, and we got a spinner coming out the last turn. And that is. I think that was. Colin? I think that was Yeah, I think that was Colin, wasn't it, from P3? It was indeed Colin. Oh, Colin Gunniff. Not sure what, what happened shame. there. I'm just going to quickly see if we can spool up a replay just to see what that was about. He's in the pit lane though, Alex. So, whatever happened to him? Oh, I think he got the wall on the inside. Kept his foot in it and oh, wall. Colin. Dear me. Well, that's thrown away P3. Massive shame for him there. Started the race so well. To qualifying fifth, got up into third position. He's now quite a way down. He'll be lucky, lucky to get out of there, although he's coming out of the pits now, Alex. So he's obviously got, got quick repairs. Yeah, just looking at it now, it just looks like he just got a little bit wide on the exit of the corner. Over the uh, higher, slightly higher curb there, onto the grass. Car gets unsettled, catches that inside wall, wall and he's got damage. So yeah, in fairness, it could have happened in a worse place, but he's been able to pit. I would think Good. he'd take fuel as well at that point. So we, we might still see him towards the end of this race, still battling in that top five as well. So we have seen not lost yeah. a great deal. We have seen previously, haven't we? Uh, especially last week, we saw with Sebastian Vettel. Uh, Abu Dhabi that an inner, sometimes a mistake can actually work to your advantage in terms of strategy especially the first race of the season and that was another a spinner wasn't it that's Neil, Neil Archibald there in the uh, Marussia so that's, that's not what he wanted 13th I believe that Cuniff is down now in I believe he's now 12th yeah, I so think it's not a disaster for him in terms of championship points. Just off, I was about to say, sorry, just off camera, I think we uh, missed that little spin from uh, Daniel Lopez as well. And we've also lost Ben Horrell just uh, being informed from the pit lane. So, yeah, Lopez has lost several positions uh, down to, well, actually, he's only, he's only lost one, uh, two positions. Yeah, it's that. Still, still in the back of this little uh, train, so he's still in with... Uh, Oh, we've got someone else there spinning on the exit of uh, the pits there, so for turn one. Exit of the pit. Ah, oh, it's Luke Dowding. Uncharacteristic mistake from him. We've seen him in a few few of our series over the over the last year or so. He's one lap down though after that first lap. Really, really put a dent in his hopes of, of getting anything good from this one. So at the moment, points are going all the way down to Tom Jones in 10th. Jones, he'll be happy to get through the first corner uh, accident for a change. Yeah, that man is so unlucky on the first lap, so he'll be delighted to still be in it. So 10th place, like I say, another uh, Australian V8 driver. So, you know, quite a little bit, quite a bit different, this car, so. Indeed. With the, um, with the misfortune of Cuniff and Lopez, the Venezuela GP team, and now on to score 25 points. Yeah, that'd be a fantastic start for those boys. So Rodriguez third, Montaldo fifth. But again, Alex, we know very well having teamed together for uh, several years now is that as a team getting good solid points in the, in the first few races really does build the confidence and the morale. Oh, completely. Uh, and, and there's nothing like going into the rest of the uh, the races of the season knowing that you've had you know a good start, a good haul of points to uh, sort of push on with. So this will be great, uh, great for them. And uh, next, like I say, next race they'll be full of confidence. I'm sure if they're not already working together, which to be fair, the cars look completely planted um, and both look like they're running the same set. So I would I would suggest that they uh, they've been working quite well together and uh, just goes to show how how that can help and the drivers are very evenly matched as well and this is actually so far at least the only team that we've seen where the drivers look like they're equal so in terms of ability 
and that could be key when you talk about Constructors' Championship lasting over an entire season. You know, Rodriguez and Montaldo look like they're the perfect fit for this team. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the other drivers that stood out that were really close on pace to me were Liam Williams and Justin Lindsay as well. Those two lads are very, very close and have a lot of battles uh, in the official series as well. So good, good, consistent drivers. Obviously, Justin just starting to lose a little bit of time now uh, to this pack. I think since um, since Colin uh, had his accident, these guys have picked up the pace a little bit. 2.03 the last lap, so instead of the 2.04, so just don't just drop Justin there. Colin was holding them up though, wasn't he? So it, it, it's amazing how many times you know something like that happens. The guy in front of you gets out of the way and you start going half a second quicker. Um, and especially Rodriguez, Alex, he's actually starting to stretch this, these uh, these three behind him now. Yeah, just, uh, I mean, uh, that's the first time really he's had that clear air. He's made the move, got himself back into the position. Uh, just as we quickly focus on uh, on our race leader at the moment, some three seconds ahead of uh, Peter here as well. So who's not giving up the chase by any means? I'll see that pit stop still got to come. So lap 8 of 20, not quite halfway yet, so... Yeah, and there's no way that Tony can actually sit on these laurels and, and, and think that he's won the race already because he still, still has 12... Well, 12 laps to go at the end of this one, so it's still going to be, you know, a test of concentration for him. And he's only 2.8 seconds in front, so a poor pit stop, Alex, and really could be backing him with a chance for, for Velkov there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the pit stop's going to make all the all the thing. These drivers won't normally be be practicing, you know, the pit in and things like that. So hitting their marks so important uh, to get a good stop. Yeah, did you don't want to go past the pit box? Just on board here with a, a, a lap with the leader as well, just to see how he's driving this car. It's just a consistent third of a second quicker than this this group between uh, third and sixth here, and that's just the, the difference between what it takes to win the race and when we get on get in the top five. As, as this battle rages on, it really has been a joy to watch these drivers so evenly matched, racing very fairly with each other. Look at Lopez now though, Alex, he's really, he's really pressuring Montaldo down into the airpin, breaking late, not quite late enough as Montaldo closes the door. Very difficult to get an outbreaking manoeuvre into that little um, left-hander, especially over that little crest which, which really can unsettle the front and the back of the car. That's, you know, I think that's probably one of the hardest corners on the circuit where that crest is is just where you want to break every time and if you know as soon as you hit it the back end gets light or the front end gets light you know you can lock up and go straight on it's such a tricky tricky corner no matter what car i've been in it's you know the <laughs> finding how to take that corner in that in whichever car you're in it's so so important to a good lap easy half a second can be had or lost there it definitely is a big challenge uh, for such a slow, innocuous corner, it really does surprise you. Daniel Lopez now, Alex, he really does look like he's uh, just picking the pace up a little bit. He looks like he's had the pace throughout this race as well to maybe snatch this third place away from João Rodriguez. Yeah, he's got to get past Montaldo and Matievich first. Yes. I mean, he's in, the, he's in that tricky position where I think he's got the pace to be quicker than most of these, these guys in front of him by the look of it. But everybody's getting a slipstream off everybody else. So until he gets to the sort of the second car in the um, in the tr in the train, he's not really going to be able to make the move because there's always there's always the guy in front getting the slipstream. As well. As he closes up heavily there on the breaking into that first corner. I thought for a minute they were going to come together. But, Back uh, marker in there as well. Sears, Charles Sears, who is twentieth. Uh, yeah, Sears is Colin's teammate, so I'm not quite sure uh, what happened happened there. I know those lads have been working together, so... Well, Sears qualified 17th, it was respectable, but he was two point, well, two seconds behind Cuniff in qualifying, so some work to do there for him. Daniel There's down into gets. Turn 5, making the move, I think he's got it there, a little oh, bit twitchy coming out of the corner, though. side by side, into the corner we were saying is tricky. I think he's oh, got it he's done. managed to make it. Yeah, Excellent Montaldo try, had a look, see if he could switch back, but Daniel covered the line off perfectly there. Great move. Yeah, excellent driving by the Spaniard there. And um, 
looks like he's he's really doing doing a good job in this race. He had a little mistake early on, but we know he's got the pace. You've raced against him quite a lot over the past couple of weeks, Alex. What's he like to uh, compete against? Yeah, very, very fair driver. Very fast as well. So we had some great races at Watkins. So it's nice to see him doing well here. So. Yeah, and he's putting his uh, talents to something else. Maybe maybe you'll be secretly hoping it'll uh, slightly put him off the F1 car a little bit. Well, here's hoping. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tom Jones just under a little bit of pressure from Paul Nielsen here, 12th and 13th. But Tom looks like he's having a look. Just outbreaked himself there. I think he would, was worried oh, that he was going to go into the back of someone. On, so. Gone off into the gravel. But that um, Lotus uh, looking lovely as well. I don't know if has, has Cuniff made another mistake, Alex. Because he's not 55 seconds behind. Well, no, he went and get a pit. He went and uh, stopped as well, and it was. It's going to take a long time to. Uh, I think it's about 30 seconds anyway. Oh. So. Uh, and he had a spin as well, so maybe yeah. Yeah, so I think I think that's about right with the probably the repair time as well. Um, that 55 seconds isn't too bad, and I think, like I say, if he's took enough fuel on, he's definitely got a chance to get top, you know, a, well, he's already in a top 10, but a, a, sort of perhaps a top 5 by the end of this race as well. Yeah, if you can get, you know, get some good laps together, I mean, he's in the 203s uh, with his fresh tyres, which is the same as we've got a couple of cars in the pit lane, Justin Lindsay and Lee Thompson. Thompson's a lap down. Lindsay. Yeah, four tyres. Yeah, full, full new set of boots for him. And fuel, and out he comes again. Just in front of Cuniff, possibly. This could be interesting. Cuniff, whose tyres are warmed oh, up. Oh, just in sideways. Oh. Terrific save. Yeah, that's that cold tyres for you there. You just uh, perhaps saw... Um, just saw him come in there, call in, and thought, right, I need to get on it as quick as possible. But it's definitely affecting him. He's not going to get a run down this straight, but hopefully the fresh tyres should drag him back up. It's given uh, given Cuniff the position. But, uh, yeah, really, <laughs> I think he saw Colin in his mirrors and probably just panicked a little bit, to be honest. We've got a good battle here, actually. Neil Archibald, who is, um, after a poor start and getting caught up, He's now in 11th place. He's got Paul Nelson right behind him. Nelson looks like he's going to go up the inside here into the hairpin. Oh, has he outbreaked himself? The answer is no. So Nelson takes that 10th place. Sorry, 11th place for Neil. Good stuff from the Arden man. At the front is 4.4 seconds between Ripassad and Velkov. Velkov's doing a pretty good job, but he's just not as consistent as Tony, is he? Yeah, you can, you know, he just needs that few tenths of a second, and uh, he's going to be able to give Tony a, a good run for his money. Just as we're watching this uh, overtake by. Uh, Nelson here, just getting the slipstream down the back straight. I think I remember racing against Tony um, in this car last year, and it's very, very good. I mean, once he gets, once he gets anywhere near you, you know you're in trouble, and uh, he does overtake well, but he's not needing to overtake today. Right at the very front, and also with and this battle between Rodriguez and Matievich. Lopez and Montaldo, it's just stretched out a little bit. There's now three seconds covering the four of them, and that's the biggest gap we've seen all race, isn't it? Yeah, but, I mean, lap time is still, still all around the 203s as well, so you know, perhaps just tyres starting to wear a little bit, fuel loads getting a bit low. So lap 12, I wonder when these guys are going to pit, if they've gone for, you know, halfway, or I think they'll be due in any time soon, or are they just going to have a little splash and dash at the end? Who knows? Who knows? It's always, always with the first race of the season, it's always very difficult to know exactly what is the quickest strategy. Um, we've seen it in F1 over the past couple of years that teams have not really got a handle on the, the tyres and the fuel until maybe the three or four races in. Got a few other uh, drivers of, uh, pitting as well. So we've got uh, Mullen, Williams, Hugo all pitted. So I'm. Um, Unfortunately, some of the guys that did manage to get caught up in that turn one obviously just couldn't get enough fuel in the tank to last the whole race. 
Yeah, that's always a difficulty of having a first lap incident. As we've got a good battle here actually going on for 16th place. That's Chris Lucky and the voice check Rapstin. They qualified right next to each other on the grid as well. So, and that, But they um, both got caught up in that incident at the beginning. So Lucky for Adax and we've got the um, Lotus car of Rapstin. I think actually before the uh, pit stop phase actually Chris was behind as well so he's managed to jump him in the pits. Yeah, just about I think. Um, 204.3 it's not bad. It's not bad pace from Chris Lucky actually. Yeah I mean it's fast, uh, fastest lap that he's done 203.7 so you know he's definitely got the he's definitely got the pace there. Yeah Matijevic actually faster than the leader on that last lap so Matijevic and Rodriguez as the race goes on seem to be getting a bit quicker but for some of these guys it could actually be the first time they've done a full distance race we don't actually know how much testing everybody's been doing so yeah a few drivers even... splitting their you know splitting themselves between cars as well so it's going to take them a little while just to get get you know properly into a rhythm as well and there's nothing like a good race uh, to do oh, that I think there's a mistake from um I think Rodriguez has made a mistake, Alex. And talk about mistakes, oh, Chris. Chris nearly making a mistake there as well. Rodriguez has got serious trouble. I don't know what that was. Has he had a, has he had a bit of a crash with someone? Just having a quick, just trying to find out what's going on. He's just slowed down. He might have had a slowdown penalty, did he? And then trying to um, make some of that time back up, did he then it, it make almost, a little mistake? It does almost look like a slowdown there, so I'm not quite it's sure. It's slowdown. He sure went over the... Um, oh, no, he's out of fuel. He's out of fuel just here in front of the pits. He's out of fuel, so he's chugging back to the line. These drivers oh perhaps not not checking the rules, realising that they uh, only had uh, so much fuel. Is that Lopez that's out of fuel? So I was watching um, Rodriguez. Uh, Lopez has gone flying past, so... Sin Lopez in the pits. Rodriguez, I think... don't think Rodriguez is out of fuel, Alex. I think he's going... He's carrying on as normal. I think he must have had a slowdown. So it's all happening here at Road America. Yeah, Tony's still flying up front as well. Just coming up to a back marker. Just shows though, Alex, what a slowdown penalty can do because Rodriguez looks five seconds on that last lap. And that could be the difference between getting on the podium and finishing what P6. Oh, there's nothing worse than being stuck behind a back marker. He's not letting him go as well. I'm not sure what this is. Perhaps the race admins will have a little shout out just to sort of uh, wave the blue flags. But he's trying to fight Tony here. So it's like, Tony's it's like on. Go, I think. Yeah, he's all through there. So. Definitely don't want anything to happen when you've got, you know, a nice little lead. I think it's always wiser to wait till after the kink to let lead it through, though, I think. Yeah, true, too, true, too, true. Still got Rabstin and Chris Lucky going hammer and tongs. And we've got a little battle here, ninth and tenth place as well. So, Alot and Lindsay. Yeah, and that, I'll just uh, pick I'll take that, that back, up. actually. I think that was a, a back marker further back, actually. Just got and caught me out there. Yeah, they're, so. they're five seconds apart there. Uh, I'll let Lindsay. There's no real battles going on at the moment, but we know that the pit stop phase isn't quite finished yet for everybody. It's the only thing with the, uh, where, you know, sometimes when you get a pit stop, it can certainly open a race up or it can close it down. And this circumstance, I think we, we, we're spread apart a little bit, but Chris... Chris Lucky still under a lot of pressure here as well, so it's great yeah, to we see uh, drivers actually 14th and 15th they are now going hammer and tong for it. Then they're lapping, they're lapping well as well, 2 or 4.0. That's not that's a good time from um, Chris Lucky, who, as we're beginning to find out, is no slouch in any car. As um, Peter Velkov pitted on the last lap, Alex, and he's he was 46 seconds down on Tony. 
and I believe that Tony's just pitted as well. And he's about the same about the same amount of time in front of Velkov as he was before, so about five seconds. Yeah, could Daniel be bit, could be a little bit more than that. Daniel Lopez right behind um, Peter Velkov here as well. So through the pit stop phase, he's certainly made up some ground. Stuck some laps in fastest lap for Peter 203. Let's see what uh, Daniel's makes me done. 203 three as well. So there's nothing between wonder. these guys. Does make me wonder whether Velkov missed his pit box. Yeah, hopefully our uh, pit Just lane uh, little... reporter can perhaps let us know. Just having a little look there. No, it looks all right to me. Unless, um, I'm thinking Lopez might not have taken any tyres, you know. Yeah, that's always possible. Just a little splash of fuel and get back out again. So I'm sometimes that st strategy can uh, work wonders. Sorry, it's just watching his pit stop and he wasn't stationary for that long. So maybe. Just a I mean, little Daniel Lopez is uh, two laps there together. Were two, 214 and 229. Velkovs was 2.14 and 2.34, so he was five seconds quicker, and that would just about equate to the time it takes to put on a set of tyres. Yeah, it looks like he's uh, used a bit of out-of-the-box thinking there. He's got himself in front of that battle that he was uh, caught behind, so... It's smart, because it puts him into real, real shallow of a podium finish now. I do feel sorry, Alex, for the guys, like you say, who did crash on lap one, because... Uh, like you said, they couldn't get enough fuel into the car to make it into a, a one-stop strategy and to make sure that, you know, they could salvage something from it. Yeah, as we see Daniel here lining up Peter, going down the main street. Not sure he's got enough of a run, but he's having a little look. Oh, he's going to be very tight in there, he can't uh, really... Thinks better of it, so definitely after that kind of a strategy to pick up those places, you don't want to throw it all away with a dive into that, that corner. There's a... In? Back marker. Oh, Alex. he's gone wide. Oh, Velkov's wide. Velkov. That might cost him big time. Distraction. That's one of the oh. Very, close. <laughs> very close there on the exit. So he's got the two, got the two Venezuelan cars behind him now. So the two Venezuelan cars must have taken tyres, Alex. Matievich, however, didn't take tyres and now leads the race. I don't know how, but Tony's down to third. Oh, you love the pit stop strategies? No, I'm still showing um, Tony My in the... My completely haywire there. <laughs> I'm still showing got, Tony in the lead. So I've got Matievich leading from Rodriguez and Reposad, but Reposad is showing on the screen as being in front on the track, so... I'm thinking just Matias is just probably pitted, so it's just uh, messing up with the timing screens as it is. Let's give it another lap to pan itself out, and we should be able to tell where everybody uh, ends up. Uh, Jao Pino up to eighth place at the moment as well, so he's worked his way up through the, through um, well, <laughs> all the way from the back of the grid. So you know, amazing, fantastic race for for him. I do believe though, Alex, that Matias is actually second, ahead of Lopez in third. So. That's worked out fantastically well for Matievich. Yeah, it has. You can and see him on track here, actually. So, Velkov's mistakes put him down to fourth, ahead of Rodriguez, who still leads his teammate Montaldo, and they've been pretty much in that order all the way through. Yeah, I wonder so we've if got we've got any go. news on whether uh, Matievich did the same strategy as uh, Daniel and just decided to go um, just fuel. He must have done. Because I can think that's the only way he's really getting that big gap over those Venezuela cars. This is still a very good result in prospect for Venezuela GP though. Chalpino in the ice sport. Looks like he's 8th. So that's terrific from uh, effectively 23rd on the grid. Justin Lindsay is ninth, And John Allett still in a, a strong 10th place as well for... That's, um, that's for the Trident, so him and Tony, Trident, so yeah. 26 points there, so also a great uh, constructing, you know, constructors points results, so. Yeah, and he's lucky half a second a lot quicker than Lindsay as well, so he's got a chance of more points to add to the total there for Trident. This battle really heating up now. And we've got back markers in the oh, way. Oh, what? That was his, uh, that was, um, was Lopez's, Lopez's teammate. teammate, yeah, so he's done, he's done a job there for him, definitely. 
Team ART. Well present. Well present, uh, Preto. Uh, you got me there. I'm stuck. It's the first, first race of the season. <laughs> I can't remember all the team names off the top of my head. The first one that neither of us have got right. I'm pretty sure it's uh, they're racing engineering, aren't they? It's racing engineering. That's sorry. the one. I'm the one who's watched GP2 all season as well, and I haven't got a clue. <laughs> 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 We've got now Lopez is really putting Matievich under some pressure. Yeah, Matievich got a back marker in front as well. I'm not sure who that is. Is that horror or is it nah, lucky? He's lucky. So where so where's the battle gone from earlier? Has Lucky made a mistake that perhaps Rabst missed? Well, Rabstein's been in the pits, so I don't know if they crashed into each other. Um I'll just go back quickly and have a look. Looks so like Rabstein's ended up in the pits. Don't know if that's scheduled. It might be scheduled, though. You never know. Just as uh, Lucky moves out, gets out of the way. Oh no, Lucky's pitted already. Oh, Lucky spun off. So oh, he didn't have a crash with Wojciech. Chris went wide at the last corner and spun it. Yeah, we've already seen a couple of drivers do that today. So just another victim. It's such a tricky corner. I mean, I've been caught out more than once. It's fair to say as well, so... He didn't hit anything, Chris, but he came straight into the pits, so... I wonder if he had a problem with his... With, well, with something. Maybe he had some damage. Yeah, Lopez just not... doesn't seem to have just enough straight line speed there. He had a look, but... He it's wants... Gonna be, it's going to be difficult to outbreak him there, though, Alex, because, like I said, the, the speeds on these cars aren't, that, aren't really that great, and the brakes are quite good, so it's, it's difficult to... Uh, Make an outbreak move from that far back. Yeah, he wants this second place as well. It'll be a fantastic he really start. So he's done he's well. He's had a little well. half spin as well, so. Maybe. I must admit, mate, I think everybody in the top ten's driven well today. Um the rest of them haven't really had the chance to show us what, what they can do, but the top ten guys have been I wouldn't say faultless, but very good. I mean, Colin Cuniff's only four seconds behind Montaldo, so his pace has been good throughout. And I must admit, it looks like the gamble to take, uh, to not take any fuel, sorry, to not take any tyres for Lopez and Matievich looks like it's worked. Because the Venezuela guys on fresh tyres, they're lapping a few tenths quicker, but not enough. Yeah, I mean, Tony was just far enough ahead as well to, to hold out. So Peter, unfortunately, he got... Um, he got swallowed up by this strategy, so which is why he finds himself in fourth place now. But yeah, I mean, it just goes to show how you know how well uh, Reposado's drove this race. You know, he's controlled it from the start to finish. Look at Lopez now; he's right, he's tucked right underneath the the rear wing of Matievich. He's having a look. He's up the inside, he's turn well, one. This this season. Yeah, he pulled he's out of that. Series. He thought best of it. Like I said, he definitely he wants at least a podium. <laughs> He needs to set him up through turn two, Alex. He doesn't need to be having little half looks. This is better. Yeah, it definitely, definitely looked better like he got a good run out of there. But look at Chris Lucky tagging along behind. Yeah, it just goes to show Chris had the pace as well. If he, you know, if he'd have had a clean start, been on the back of this pack, he easily. could have definitely, have, um, you know, had, had a shout. Daniel down here to Lopez. Oh, oh, oh thought for a close. second. Was there any contact? It didn't look like it. And we've got, um, I think we've got a little battle further back as well, but we switch, switch back to Daniel. Lopez oh, has been in the thick of it. Max oh, off, look. off, off. Off goes um, uh, Hugo Preto, big time. I think he was battling with Lee Thompson. He went off big time there. And look at Chris Lucky, he's, he's almost faster than these two guys. Yeah, now he's, he's actually got the... Uh, I think he's got, got that fresh, fresh rubber, and this will be unnerving Daniel a little bit. You know, he's got a back marker behind him. He's trying to get this second place. He won't be, you know, he won't yeah, want to be caught up or anything like that. So, but Chris is sensible enough driver. He won't do anything crazy. I hope not. <laughs> he's he's 17. I touch a bit of wood as I say that. <laughs> yep. And he, we don't want to ruin this battle for second position. Big points at stake. 18 points for second. 15 for third if you're unfamiliar with it. 
just eight seconds covers second to sixth though after 20 laps it's not bad going and just three seconds covers eighth to tenth Justin Lindsay and John Allert and nose to tail as well and we just got uh, Hugo got here Jean just Pino. going up Jean Pino just got in front of both of them so eighth place for him what can Lopez do Alex he hasn't got many chances well he's only got one or two chances left you would think on the final lap. Yeah, down into turn five. It's going to be this corner is going to be key. Get a fantastic exit out of it. Using as much of the track as possible. Kicking up the dust there. Is Lopez close enough? I'm not sure he is, you know. Looks like he's a bit further back than he was. Down towards the hairpin. He might just have a go anyway. Or does he want to keep his third place intact? It looks like the latter. Half a defence from Matijevic. Well, what's the mix? Drove, driven very well today. Qualified seventh, but his race pace has been excellent. Yeah, I mean, these top sort of like five or six guys, well, almost the top ten, really. The times are so close. It's just sort of, you know, how things have panned out in the race and strategies. Certainly made a big uh, big call to this, so. It just seems like one lap is, uh, one lap, one guy's quicker than the other, the next lap, the other way around. So that's the only difference, really, between them the carousel for the last time so yep. Matijevic probably has enough here Alex yeah it's just this one one chance now Daniel's got he looks like he's just a little bit far back but he's going to get a little bit of slipstream down here I don't think he's going to be able to have a go in here no it's too, it's too far back I think he might well, try it but you've got to be a demon on the brakes if you want to do that I think he knows he wants these 15 points and uh, Tony Reposad's coming out in the last corner and he's going to come over the top of the hill now and he's going to win round one of GP 260 and that's well deserved for the Trident team Matijevic will just get second ahead of Lopez to complete the podium brilliant yeah. Velkov takes forward Rodriguez a fantastic fifth Montalaro in sixth place yeah, great stuff from Venezuela, GP. And Colin, Colin off. Oh, someone uh, into the wall. <laughs> Good job we're not doing uh, penalty points for instance. instance. <laughs> Colin, Colin Finn's right there to get yeah, seventh. Seventh place, you know, like I said, I thought he still had a shout at a decent result. It couldn't have happened at a better and time. John, Allert, John Allert's taken ninth from Justin Lindsay on the last lap. Don't know what's happened to Jao Pino. I think he's run out of fuel. Oh, he's he is. He's, he's just crawling <laughs> around there. He's run out of fuel. Oh, what a disaster for him. Oh, he's probably not going to get any points either because I think that was that was just Tom Jones that's gone through. So Jones is going to get into the points for Lotus. Just two corners to go for him. That's a gift of, of a championship point. It's Alpino. He just needs to put a bit more gas in it. Yeah, Jones' front end of his car as well. He's all and mashed you know up. He's brought it home. He's got himself, got himself a championship point. You know what's worse for Pino? The last bit's uphill. He's not going to make it. <laughs> Aaron <laughs> Mullen coming across in 11th. Nielsen's now in 12th as well. Oh, dear. But he looks like he's run out, of, run out of fuel as well. These his, driving... car's go his car's all over the place. I think, he's, I think he's done more than run out of fuel there. No, he crashed into the wall. <laughs> Yeah, Pignol just stopped now as well. He needed his teammate to help oh, him cross fact, the line. Alex, I reckon if you go back and have a look between Paul Nelson and Aaron Mullen, we had a little set two there. A little tete a tete after the kink. Let's have a quick look. Mullen, see was, we... going, Mullen was going for the position. And it looked to me, well. Mullen went for it, got up the inside. Oh, he was a little late on the brakes, though. He couldn't get it turned in enough. It's on the last lap, though. It's probably a fair game, to be honest. Although, I don't think Nelson will see it like that. Yeah, Nelson just, uh, has just about made it to the line via the pit lane. So he will finish in 12th oh, position. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately for him. Um, we'll finish well it looks like 13th for Pino 
Oh, he'll be gutted with that. He did all that hard work from 20th yep. place, got himself up into, I think it was 8th, was it, at one point? I think he, well, he was actually in top 5 before he pitted, but yeah, he was 8th on the last lap. But no wonder he was going so quickly, because he was a bit light, as it turns out. But, um, oh, it's a fantastic first race, Alex, in GP260 Championship. Yeah, great race strategy panned out there as well for a few drivers. So, I mean, Tony, 12.1 seconds in the end, definitely controlled the race and uh, walked away with it a little bit there, but I think... Um, it's going to be difficult to beat. Yeah, definitely. I don't think he's going to have it all his way as well, because just looking at some of the pace of the other drivers, there is definitely some people that can give him a run for his money. So, uh, we'll see how it pans out in the next few races. We will indeed, but that was um, that was a terrific race, and it, it just shows Alex what a, what a good a good evenly matched series can uh, can bring you can bring you excellent racing. We did have a bit of a, uh, a a crash at the start, which which I haven't actually seen. So I don't know if you want to just take take everyone back and have a little look at that properly. Uh, yeah, I'll just, I'll, uh, just let me just uh, spool that all up because it really did take out. Half the field early on. You know, half the field were uh, were affected by that, and it really did. It, it meant that there were two distinct groups. There was a group fighting for the points, and a group fighting, well. Just for pride, really, essentially. After that first, after that first lap, they were so far behind. Let's just see if we can uh, get this into the right area. Apparently not. <laughs> I'm trying to do the same thing. Struggling a little bit to get um, right back to the beginning. Yeah, it took out about, um, I'd say 10, so 10, 11 cars got, got affected by that though. Good half the field. Um, Good effort from Aaron Mullen to finish 11th as well. He just missed out on the points. Did have a bit of a crash at the end with Paul Nelson. Paul Nelson was classified on the lead lap. Um, 3 minutes 20 seconds behind in 12th. Jalpino and his... Uh, well, his well, well and truly run dry on him. Got a couple of drivers just waiting for an interview. Um... Colin Cunniff's down there, so we just uh, quickly drag him up and have a quick word of him. Obviously, yeah, he was running uh, running nice and high. Uh, in fact, actually, he's just moved, but we'll 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 grab him anyway. Hi, Colin. Um, Hi. You were just in the uh, interview channel. You jumped out just as we were talking about you. See, you must have sensed we were coming for you. <laughs> um, tell us a little bit about your race today. Obviously, you started off well. Had a little accident. Yeah, no, it was, uh, I had a brilliant start. I've got very well but uh, just I saw that uh, Jal got past and then I, had, and I knew he had a lot skinnier wing than me so we was trying to get a better run at the last corner and that was it I just clipped the barrier and then I think without that I probably would have had a decent finish. Yeah you were really running well at the beginning but in in a way that, that mistake it put you in just a bit, bit of clear track and you Aye. didn't do too badly really considering at the end. Yeah, looking at the laps uh, there, I was just thinking, uh, if it wasn't for that, but oh, it's just one of those races. Um, I, I was probably the first time I've uh, crashed there this week. Um, I just, oh, I just can't believe it. We, we, we were only saying it is a tricky little corner, actually, and you do want to push as much as possible coming out yeah. of that corner, but it does just sort of eat you up if you try and take a little bit too much of it, so... Yeah, terribly unlucky there, but still a great race and some good, good early points. Um, uh, I haven't seen yeah, Char six points. I haven't seen oh, Charles good. around. I mean, how did um, have you had a chance just to quickly have a word of him? See yeah, how his race yeah, fared. He's, he's had a, quite a mixed race. He's, he's, he's 
got involved in the first corner accident. Well, he avoided the first one, he says, but he got caught up in the second one. Um, and then after that, he was just sort of down his limitation, just trying to sort of get the car towards the end. Yeah, it's a tr we were saying actually, it's a quite a tricky little track, this one. For that turn one, a lot of cars steaming down there. It does, uh, does seem to... Um just seemed to be a bit of a wreck fest that first lap so ah well because it's quite fast then you're not so sure how fast you're going to enter the first corner so everybody's sort of in a bit in the rear and then everybody checks back in the first lap so uh, uh, over the years it has been quite a bad corner in this series but like I say just an experience for some of them but there you go I think so everybody I think everybody at the front tries to go a little bit slower you know so they don't cause a crash and then it just all seems to bottle up a little bit behind it but yeah well, that's and it. it's blind as well if, if you've got a car in front of you you haven't got much chance of seeing anything so but yeah i mean six points it's a good start to the season and uh you'll be looking towards next week what, what are you what are your hopes for next round uh well it's silverson isn't it so it's going to be interesting since no 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 one's really done it in the last uh, couple of seasons so all it depends i mean tony is going to be way out in front as usual um, and then that's just for everybody else but well yeah. it is it is just the national circuit as well so it's quite short and the, from our experience the racing there has been very like drafting orientated so yeah you know you guys uh, could have a little pop at him here i think this is definitely a track that he's going to come under pressure yeah definitely um, i mean it all depends on the set of work how many hours people can put in um, like i say this is one that people's not going to have been able to practice um, it's been good that this one's been one that we could actually uh, practice because we're doing it in the, the full season as well so i think in general though that um you know the times are very close between the top sort of five six seven drivers so i don't think tony's going to have it all his own way we were just discussing that we think that it's going to be a lot closer than maybe what some of the drivers are saying as well. Yeah, well, I mean, over one lap, he's unbeatable, but uh, in the race, it's, uh, like, I mean, he is very fast, but uh, if somebody can get a good start, and they fight him all the way. Well, thanks very much, Colin. You know, unlucky with uh, what happened there, but still some good points uh, earlier on, so, you know, yeah. could could have, been, could have been a lot worse. So, you know, yeah, well done on guys. picking up, and uh, we'll uh, see you next week for uh, Silverstone. Cheers, guys. See ya. Yeah, well done, mate. Should we just grab uh, Lee as well? He's sitting in there. Just see what happened to him. Mr. Thompson, welcome to the booth. Good evening, guys. Hi, it's hi Andrew. Hello, Hello, mate. Just tell us a little bit about your race and uh, how it went. And um, I think you got. Did you get caught up in that turn one? Yeah, unfortunately, so I've just spent the last few minutes looking at the replays, so I don't know how much you guys have already um, taken a look at it, but yeah, I was pretty much a first one that made contact. Um, Justin got loose going into turn one, uh, or exiting turn one, and everyone backed off a little bit, and then really there was nowhere else for anyone to go after that, I think. So you're to blame then, really. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was going to put it all on Justin. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, unfortunately, yeah, we were past the apex, and past the apex, everyone started slowing, and that was it. There was actually two separate um, kind of contacts from the same uh, reaction, unfortunately. So yeah, and then for me and half a dozen others, I think that was race over, really. Yeah, we were just <laughs> I saying. I think it was about ten. I think there were about ten drivers who, who were involved in that. Um, I mean, what what was your race like after that? Did you have much chance to fight anybody else? Well, as you say, because <laughs> because ten other people got wiped out. We're all sat there in the pits waiting for, for, for the toad to end. So, actually, at least we uh, we weren't all on our own the whole time. So it wasn't quite as bad as it might have been. Yeah, I'm just having a look at the uh, at the replay a few laps in now when you're out, and you can see a few guys in front of you and behind you. So yeah, just at least, at least you still had uh, some fun there. Um, obviously, now now first race is uh, done and dusted. I mean, what what do you what do you think uh, your chances are of? Uh, Featuring in this championship as well. I mean, the the times look particularly close. Uh, I think yeah. it's going to be a good little series. I mean, obviously the top what three, four cars. I mean, they're just running insane times. I mean, to get two o twos in qualifying is just I can't comprehend how that could happen. So um, yeah, I never expected to be at the sharp end. However, uh, I got the opportunity to run with uh, cars who were lapping me, and yeah, I was hanging into sort of sixth, seventh, eighth place, you know, reasonably happily. So. 
Yeah, if I get a clean run, then I should be expecting to be running the top ten, I think. Well, yeah, it's very close, really, in general, in the race with times, and we saw how much difference that the draft could make as well. Um, what, what do you think then, going forward to Silverstone? We're on the national circuit next week. What, what do you think you can do there? Um, well, first of all, in the draft, just to give you an idea, uh, I was making four tenths, so my PB was a f uh, 2044, and then as soon as I was sitting behind uh, Montaldo, uh, I went to a four flat, so yeah, it didn't make a, a big difference. Uh, Silverstone, I know Silverstone itself really, really well, um, but not the national circuit so much. I've not really done any running on the national circuit in iRacing, so uh, I'm looking forward to it, but it's a new a new configuration to learn for this, um, for this format. Obviously, the um, I think you'll enjoy. It. We've had we've had uh, we had a Mazda Cup race there, didn't we? Yeah, I was, I was, about, I was about very good. Yeah, I was just going to say. Um, you, obviously, you're splitting your time between cars at the moment as well. You're doing a bit of the uh, Formula One series as well as the Star Mazda. So I know that's affected you this week, but perhaps next week as well with this not ma with the uh, series not matching the official series, it's going to be a little bit of a challenge for everyone. So that's going to play back into your hands as well. So. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, the regular runners will uh, will not have quite the same opportunity that they might normally. So um, you're right. I'm I'm looking forward to the challenge of trying to run the two cars this year. Um, but it's as you say, it's a compromise for both of them, unfortunately. Yeah, well, uh, you know, unlucky really on the um, on the first the first corner incident. But um, you know, great to see that you uh, stuck with it and uh, brought it home. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing what you can do in the next round. Thank you very much for the broadcast, thank you for organising the race, and thank you for the fast tow. I wasn't sure where I was going to get it or not, so I was quite relieved. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, cheers Lee. Cheers Lee. Bye bye, thank you. Right, well no. Alex, I think... Is there anybody else you well, want no, to grab? Uh, there's nobody else in here? the Ready for Interview channel, so uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure we are done for this point, but we'll make a point of telling them for, uh, for next week, just if they want to have a little to then to get themselves in there. I have to say that was a very enjoyable um, first ever GP260 race here on ARL TV and uh, well did you enjoy it Alex? Yeah yeah great race really thoroughly enjoyed I mean it was hard to uh, to call that top sort of five or six really what was going to go on there so and uh, as, as it turned out some strategies made uh, you know the big difference at the end. I look forward to, uh, to the next race as well, Silverstone National. We've had some fantastic races there in the past as well. Short little track, lots of drafting. So I think I even managed to win one. You, you did indeed. So, yeah, very few corners. <laughs> I think, didn't I take everybody out there? You got I through and I took the entire field out. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> less so. of all that, the better. Um, thanks, everybody, for watching. You know, really, we really appreciate it. And you know we've we've loved this broadcast. Hope you have too. Please subscribe on YouTube. Um, I've forgotten the channel name. The new new yeah. channel name. Yeah, it's Apex. Um, actually, no, I forgot it as well. We're useless. Is it Apex Racing TV? Something I think it like is Ra Apex Racing TV. I don't think ARL Dash TV was available. So yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Apex Racing TV. So. And look, please subscribe, like I say, on on YouTube. And uh, I will just—I'm just checking the channel actually. Apex Racing TV. It is all one word. So, please subscribe on there. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. And well, from Andrew Woodhouse, Alex Simpson. It's goodbye from Road America. We'll see you at Silverstone. Take your hobby to the next level with a quality racing rig that works great with a PS3, Xbox 360, and a PC. DT Omega Racing Simulator is compatible with a wide range of steering wheels including Logitech, Fnatic, Thrustmaster, and more. The DT Omega is available now worldwide by going to...